So, so one of the things we like to do here at camp is um, not only help you guys with your golf games on the technical side, but we also like to give you guys ideas on the emotional side or the mental side of the game. And we have a little talk tonight that uh, we believe will help your games, but also maybe inspire you in uh, some other areas of your life. So it's something that we enjoy doing each week. Uh, we like to start with this little video, which was created by ESPN, the E60 program. It's about golf in Mumbai. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. And then after we uh, watch the video, uh, we'll get into our talk, which is based on the attitudes behind uh, living a high performance life, both on and off the course. There are two Mumbai's. There are skyscrapers and businessmen. There are also slums and beggars. There are two Mumbai's. I come from one. Anil Mane comes from another. And there are two games of golf. One is played at my club, the Bombay Presidency Golf Club. And one is played on the other side of a 10 foot ball. <laughs> From the rooftops of shacks and through the streets, this game is played with plastic balls, man-made holes and metal rods bought at the market and shaped by the golfers. Neil Mane lives in this 10 by 10 foot shack next to the wall that separates my club from the slums. His golf clubs are worth more than the shack's thin wall. Anil lives and dreams call. The only thing that matters more is his family. A wife, three daughters and one more child on the way. Anil is 27 and has a 9th grade education. That's when he dropped out of school to carry at my club, the Bombay Presidency Golf Club. I met Anil six years ago. He was one of the best caddies. He would become one of the best golfers. Anil was honing his golf skills in the streets. Then, in 2006, using someone else's clubs, he beat India's fourth ranked amateur in a match play tournament. I thought that given his talent and ambition, he deserved a chance. So I got him a new set of titles and I sponsored a spot for him on India's semi-pro tour. So Anil, this time, uh, the tournament, the third tournament, where he won the third tournament, why did he win? Probably, he didn't win because he won the long run, he won the left pool game. He won the pool game? Yes, he won the pool game. How much money did he win? $30,000. Very good. Thank you, sir. Last year, between caddying and the tour, Anil made $1550. This year, Anil qualified for the professional tour. He no longer has time to caddy. I go to two tournaments. I go to two tournaments. And if I go to Delhi, I go to 24 hours. If I go to Calgary, I go to 36 hours. I cover Anil's expenses 
but his only income is body wins on tour. So far this year, as a professional, Anil hasn't made any money. उनके जैसा बनने के बाद भी जो जिस जगह से मैं आऊँ वो तो भी अपनी जो जगह थी ठीक है क्योंकि कितना भी बड़ा कितना अमीर भी हुआ When Anil returns home from the tour, he swings in the slums. Twice a month, there are three hole tournaments. To the winner, about five dollars. As much as anyone, Anil needs the money. This week's tournament will be played through the slums. The first hole demands a straight drive, avoiding the laundry line to the left, sharps to the right. Anil is ahead by one stroke going into the second hole of the tournament. It's the longest and most difficult. The golfer must fly the water. After the second hole, Anil leads by two strokes. The final hole of the tournament is the shortest. From an elevated tee, the golfer gets penalized a stroke if he lands in the garbage. इतना होता कि मैं सेव करूँगा, बुकी के लिए करूँगा और 100% आई कैन विन। In Mumbai, there are two games of golf. One is played at my club. The other in the slum where Anil lives. On both courses, Anil has seen victory. And in both places, he dreams of more. What do you guys think when you see something like that? How does it make you feel? Humble. Humble? Okay. Anything else? Lucky. Makes you feel lucky? What else? Fortunate? Yeah, it makes you feel like golf is something that everybody can enjoy. Does anyone want to play golf after seeing that? Yeah. 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 It gets me fired up. It makes me want to go down to Peter Hay and grab two clubs and have another, another two club tournament. So, so one of the great things about golf is that, that golf is um, it's very unifying. I like to think that no matter what our differences are in this world, there's somebody somewhere on the other side of the planet that's standing over a three-foot putt that feels the same way I do right here in, in Pebble Beach. And if they make it, they get pumped. If they miss it, they go, ah. Oh. You know, regardless of our, um, our backgrounds, uh, our ethnic backgrounds, how much money we have, where we live, how fortunate we are or not, you know, golf is a great unifier. And the thing is, is that when you look at Anil, does he look like he feels like a victim in this world? No. Not at all. 
I mean, the guy, he's living in the slums. He's living in garbage. He's playing golf with clubs that he had to, to make and his friends had to make and using ping pong balls for golf balls. And he's playing through trash, but they're having the same experience in terms of joy and excitement and camaraderie that we have right here in, in Pebble Beach. So that's kind of, a, kind of a cool thing. So the other thing about Anil is that he's a dreamer. He believes that there's more for him, even though he doesn't live with this victim's mentality. And he's working very hard every day to make this dream come true for himself and for his family. So here we are, Nike Junior Golf Camps, right here in, in Pebble Beach, California. We're all really fortunate. We come from, from great families. Uh, our families have the, the means to send us to have this experience. Uh, outside of camp, our lives are loaded with opportunity, just loaded. And so Neil's starting down here, and we're already starting way, way up here. So because we're starting in such a, a fortunate position, it would be a real shame if we were to waste our own potential as it relates to how good we can play on the golf course and how well we can live off the golf course as well. So if someone like that, who's living in the slums, living in garbage, has so much hope and so much passion for the game and for life, then how should we be rewarding ourselves as well? Hopefully with that same level of dedication, that same level of excitement. So what we're going to do here tonight is we're going to have a little talk. We call it the road to greatness. It's all about creating success in golf and life through the mindset that you choose to adopt every shot, every day, and also in everything that you do. So um, who here has heard of uh, mental toughness? As it relates to sports, we call it sports psychology, right? Raise your hands. Who's heard of it? So uh, obviously it says it right here on the slide, but you know, what, what is mental toughness? When someone says uh, they work with a sports psychologist, if Michael Jordan has a sports psychologist, or a tour player has a sports psychologist, or an NFL quarterback, what are they trying to do? It's so that when, even if you play a certain way, it's your mind that gives up on you. You get angry in golf and then you don't play as well. It's training to look at the bright side of things and continue to play your best and do your best rather than getting down on yourself and failing. Okay. Good. Anyone else? Like pressing the reset button after you miss the shot, like just starting all over again instead of getting stuck on that shot. All right. So not letting your emotions or your moods affect your future performance? Yeah. Okay. We got the Olympics coming up in a few weeks in London. Would you say that everyone that's competing, let's say gymnastics, for example, would you say that everyone that's competing in gymnastics across the world, that they're pretty talented people? physically gifted, yeah. you know, they can do all the flips and the twists and the tumbles. Yeah. You know, they can do all that stuff. So at this highest level, they all want one thing, right? They want the gold medal. They want to represent their country and win gold or silver or bronze. So what's going to separate those people who have so much physical uh, gifts, so to speak, so many physical gifts, what's going to separate them when it counts the most? How they, how they think. So you train and you train and you train, but now all of a sudden it means something. So when we talk about sports psychology or we talk about mental toughness, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to train the way we think to increase the likelihood of us getting what we want. So if we're playing golf, we want to shoot a certain score or hit a certain shot or win a tournament. Uh, if we're talking about gymnastics, we want to win a gold medal, but now is when it counts. So we know that we can do it when the pressure isn't on, when no one's watching, when we're practicing at our home club, when we're hitting six iron after six iron after six iron, or hitting driver after driver after driver. But all of a sudden now, we're on the golf course, and spectators are watching, our parents are watching, the community is watching. If we keep on extrapolating this experience out, the world is watching. You know, so when the world is watching, can we perform when it counts the same way we perform when the pressure isn't on? So, um, when you look at mental toughness training, it goes way beyond sports. So the kinds of people that entertain this idea and understand that how you think increases the likelihood of you performing at a highest level would be athletes, which is obvious. People in business. So let's say you really want to crush it in business. You've got these big goals, these big dreams. You want to create some multi-million dollar corporation. You want to take a product to marketplace. You want to compete with other competitors out there. 
you, know, you understand the way you think shapes how you move through each day. And of course, how you move through each day shapes how much money you're able to make and how successful you're able to be. So people that are in business like to engage in mental toughness. And also we like to say anyone who dreams, anyone who dreams of really big things understands that they have to train the way they think so that they can again increase the likelihood of getting what they want. So we always say down here, motivation is what gets you started, but habit is what, is what keeps you going. Who here has been motivated to do something really big and never happened? Yeah, me. Right? You tell your friends, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And all of a sudden, six months go by and they say, hey, whatever happened to this or that? And you go, eh, didn't quite pull it off. You know, so it's one thing to have a goal or an idea, but the habits that you create through thinking help you make it become reality. Go ahead. So you start asking these people, these athletes, these business people, these dreamers say, you know, why in the world do you engage with this coach, this performance coach, the sports psychologist? And they say, well, you know, we understand the connection between thinking and success. So um, when you rehearse success in your mind, you experience, experience it in your life. So uh, who has watched the Olympics and seen something like a uh, downhill ski race? And you see, yeah, you see a competitor before they're about to go ahead and do their run. You ever see them do anything weird? They put the camera on them, right? Here's this person, maybe they're from Germany or they're from Sweden or some, some country that really skis great. And what are they doing? You ever seen? They got their eyes closed. They got their hands up by their head. They're moving their head back and forth. And what are they doing? They're imagining themselves doing it. Yeah, they're imagining themselves racing the perfect race. They're trying to see it up here, crystal clear, so that when they hop in that gate and it goes beep, 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 go, now they're on autopilot, so they're creating it here so that they can live it eventually out there. Who's heard of uh, imagery as it relates to, to golf? Picture your shot. How many people out there get behind their ball, look towards their target, and picture exactly what they want every single time? You do? That's great. You, Leo? Okay. Has anyone tried to do it, stuck with it for a little bit, and then been like, ah, kind of lose the feel for it? Yeah, so again, in sports psychology, you know, as it relates to golf, it's all about getting into the habit. We talked about the habits on the last page. Getting into the habit of trying to do the same things over and over and over again so that you train your mind just like you train your body. So who here has uh, gone in the gym, grabbed some dumbbells, done 10 reps? Dumbbell curls, okay? You do these curls. You ever look at yourself in the mirror after you do the curls? Yeah. See if your biceps are bigger? Yeah? Do they get bigger right away? Maybe for a few seconds, right? Next morning you wake up, do your shirts fit any tighter? No, no it takes a little bit of time. You know, so we have to learn how to train our mind in a way that's consistent, just like we have to train our muscles in a way that's consistent as well. So when you rehearse success in your mind, you experience it in your life, and that applies to your golf game, it applies to ski racing, it applies to business, it applies to increasing the likelihood of getting anything that you want.